there. We are getting started now. My name is Robin Bremer. I am the author of the Kingdom Living series and the Bible study course and the pocket guides. And here is a Bible study that I'm reading from that we're working with today. And we are going to, I am going to share with you how God wants us rich and everything about God is for us to prosper. Oops, here comes my cat up from my table. <laughs> okay, so let me uh, share with you. There is absolutely positively no doubt in my heart that God wants you to prosper in your business, in your finances, in your family, in, in uh, money, in wealth, in having good stuff. There is no doubt in my mind that God wants you rich and prosperous. Poor is a curse, and we're going to go over all those scriptures. In fact, tonight I did something a little bit different. I have taken them, I have taken the um, scriptures from my Bible study, and I'm going to be placing it up on the board so you can actually see it. So, uh, let's see here. First of all, let me pull up this. Um, okay, now... This is lesson eight. I'm sorry, I just get so excited when I talk about things of God. God wants you to be prosperous, have overabundance, have overflow, have extravagant in every area of your life. The kingdom of God, excuse me, Romans 14, 17 says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And in Matthew it says that you pray God's will, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, there's no poverty, there's no lack, no sickness, disease, or fear of death in heaven. And God wants and created the earth and you to live on earth like uh, you will in heaven. So, those people who have a poverty mentality that think being, if they want something and they want to be rich and prosperous, that they're sinning, well, they're going to be in for a surprise because there's some pretty awesome stuff in heaven. The streets are made of gold. So, uh, the gospel of the kingdom is good news to the poor. And the Bible says that. Let me pull up the first scripture here. Uh, the first thing that I want to share with you. Uh, right here. Okay. Um, that basically, let me see here. I see it backwards. I don't know how to fix that. So it makes it kind of confusing for me because I can't read backwards. Uh, but Jesus basically paid the price with his blood so that we wouldn't have to be poor. That's what justice is. And God does not want us to be poor. Um, it says um, in Acts 10.38, I believe it is, that God, uh, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power and went about doing good, healing the sick. Uh, casting out demons, preaching the good news to the poor. I'm not sure if it says in that scripture or another scripture, which I will go over later. Uh, preaching the good news to the poor. What is the good news to the poor? Is that you don't have to be poor anymore. So take a look at those scriptures that I have up on there. And I think maybe it would be easier for me if I looked at those scriptures on one of my um, papers here. It kind of made things a little bit tough for me <laughs> doing things this way. Uh, but I wanted you to get a good look at those scriptures as I go over them so that <clears throat> you could write them down if you wanted to. Okay, so the first one here, I'm just going to pull up that one real quick so I can see it because it is backwards. Let's see here. It is backwards on mine. Okay, so Luke 4, 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The Spirit of God is not on him to preach the gospel to the poor. Luke 4, 18. Now, if the Spirit of God is on him to preach the gospel to the poor, and God is supernatural, don't you think that the Spirit was on him to show the poor that they don't have to be poor no more? That it's not God's will. It's God's will for them not to be poor. And poor in the original language means poor, humble, meek, needy, weak, and afflicted. And in Matthew 12, 18, it talks about <laughs> excuse me, I'm trying to talk too loud here. It talks about how Jesus will do justice. Okay, now the next uh, uh, scriptures that I'm going to put up there is poverty is from the devil and it is oppression. Okay, the devil comes to make us poor, to oppress us. And if you look at Psalms 12, 5, it talks about that. 
and first John 3 33 8 it says that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and if the works of the devil is oppressing the poor then Jesus came to destroy people being having poverty and being poor and if you look at Luke 7 12 it says that uh, Jesus said to them go and tell John what you have seen and healed heard the blind see the lame walk the lepers are cleansed the deaf hear and the dead are raised when they and the poor have the gospel preached to them and that was when uh, John's disciples came and said should we expect you or or is there another coming and also in Psalms 82 3 it says that Jesus wants to uh, defend the poor and the needy so let me pull that one up for you real quick and take a look at that real quick now those are some of the scriptures that I just went over number two and if you're taking notes you can uh, write those down because I'm going to get ready I'm going to switch to um, what a king actually wears and to remind you that you are a king and um, I'm going to go over what kingly gar uh, garments you wear and I'm going to put that up <coughs> excuse me so you can actually see that and take notes on it so we went over uh, poverty is oppression no matter how you look at it poverty is sickness and disease it is not of God it's not what God has for you it's not the best it's not heaven on earth so uh, I hopefully you can see that clearer than you can see me because uh, my webcam uh, doesn't make it as clear as I see it here so hopefully you can see those actual scriptures that I'm going over and I'm giving you enough time to write them down like I said the purpose of God uh, God sending Jesus was to destroy the works of the devil and one of the works that he destroyed was to preach the gospel to the poor and he also talks about in Psalms 8 uh, Psalms 82 3 uh, defend the poor and the fatherless do justice to the afflicted and the needy so it it is justice it is God's justice for people not to be poor because poverty is oppression and oppression is from the devil okay um, let me go over here I'm sorry to do this clicking but it's just so much fun to give you this information here let's see what I'm it's not working now alright I want that one to go up there not the right one okay let's try that one okay well this is about our covenant of peace and uh, as you can see you can't get it on there all of it on there so let me read some of it to you and uh, no it looks like this is um the clothing that the king wears um, a king and remember we are kings and priests and part of our covenant is a covenant of peace and a covenant of peace is nothing missing nothing broken it's a covenant of prosperity and that's the covenant that we're under right now in the New Testament it's the covenant of peace the covenant of grace uh, so this is how a king would dress uh, with royal broad broad cloth uh, embroidered cloth with uh, badgered skin fine linen silk ornaments bracelets chains jewelry on the forehead earrings on the ear um, a beautiful crown upon your head decked with gold and silver now if you tell me that God doesn't like for you to wear jewelry you do not know what you are talking about because he is talking here this is what he's saying to um, to his people he says listen I found you and this is what I did for you and then uh, fine linen silk embroidered cloth uh, work they eat the finest flour honey and oil and you are exceedingly beautiful and so that is talking about and uh, you prospered in a kingdom and I'm not sure if that's what's showing up there or if it's King Solomon um, let me go here that was our covenant now I'm gonna try to switch here to King Solomon and see if we can get anything going up here this is not working as planned Okay, let's see turn this on I'm still learning how to work this stuff uh, King Solomon <laughs> it doesn't want to get up there okay we'll try this one no overlay selected okay I tried to make this easy for you all <laughs> it's just not doing very well 
All right, so let me go over some of these things. And since I can't pull it up for you, now as a king, King Solomon was the richest king ever, even richer than Bill Gates. God said King Solomon was the richest man that ever was and ever, the richest king that ever was and ever will be. And in 1 Kings 4.26, and God made him rich. In 1 Kings uh, 4.27, it says there was no lack in their supply. And I'm going to show you in a few minutes <coughs> about the curse that part of the curse that Jesus redeemed us from was that there was no lack. Now in 1 Kings 13.10, it says, uh, King Solomon gave Queen Sheba all that she desired and whatever she asked uh, because this was royal generosity isn't that I love that scripture royal generosity and that's what we should we should be so rich that we have royal generosity that we can give and it says that King Solomon surpa surpa surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom and then in 1st King 29 25 it says so the Lord exalted King King Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all of Israel and bestowed on him royal majesty. Okay, God bestowed on him royal majesty. So if there's something wrong with being rich and prosperous, God would not bestow it on a kingdom. God would be saying, here, let me make you poor. Let me curse you. But God was giving people, was giving Solomon in this particular case, rich as royal majesty as had never been on a king before him and in all of Israel and in first Chronicles 1 11 and 12 because uh, Solomon did not ask for um, wealth riches or honor or the life of his enemy God gave him all that he gave him riches and wealth and honor which I think is so awesome and so right there that shows you that that is God's will for his kids. Now let me just go back here and see if I can get any of these uh, working. Okay, let's uh, turn this off and turn that on and see if we can get something up here. Playing with all these buttons. Number six is what we want. <laughs> it's making it up in a little circle over there. Over there. It's not what I want it to do. This is not too cool. It's not working the way it's supposed to be. Okay, I'm turning on the lower thirds and I want this one. I want this one up there. Let's see this one displayed. Okay. Shows. Okay, I'm chosen that one. Okay, I suppose I haven't figured it out. Okay, so what I want to show you now is about the blessing. Our covenant is a covenant of blessing. And here are some scriptures that talk about it. Um, let me go up here a little bit further. Okay, uh, this is actually scriptures about uh, poor and, well let me just read some of them to you. Proverbs thirteen twenty two says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for righteous. So that tells you two things right there. A good man leaves inheritance to his children's children. And we are, con God is a good man and he's leaving inheritance to us, his children. And so much so that we can leave inheritance to our children. But it also says the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Now, if it was wrong for us to have wealth, then why would God tell us that the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous okay we gotta get out of this mindset that it's humble to be poor it is not humble to be poor it is it is oppression it is um, a wrong mindset it is demonic uh, demonic influence for you to think that God wants you poor everything about a good daddy is that he wants his kids to be more prosperous than he's ever been to do more than what he's ever been to be abundantly supplied think of yourself as a daddy if you withhold food or or clothing from your child you're not a good daddy and even if you don't give them what's in style it and you can afford it it's not being a good parent if you know you want your kids to whatever is you just got to get out of that mindset that that 
being poor is good because the Bible does not talk about that. The Bible does not say being poor is a good thing. And there are some scriptures I'll go over at the end and also answer some questions if you have any. <coughs> okay. The wealth of the Gentiles shall be turned over to you, Isaiah 65. Therefore your gates shall be continuously opened. They shall not be shut day or night, that man may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles. Isaiah 611, Ecclesiastic 226. For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight. But to the sinner he gives work of gathering and collecting that he may give to who is good before God. And that is us. Okay, in Acts 319 it talks about uh, God's going to restore all things to us. And when he created us in the garden, he, he created us so that we wouldn't have to work or toil for anything. Everything was seed time and harvest and we were to speak things into existence. And we had authority and dominion over all the earth. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we were not to toil. But then when Adam fell, he came under the cursed toil system where he, he had to work hard and work long and work hours to survive. And that's the cursed system, the world system, the kingdom of God system. And I go over that in some of my other teachings and some of the seminars and workshops I'll be having later this year teaching how to operate in the kingdom of God but that was not God's intent for us to toil he made the garden he put the gold on top of the earth he didn't bury it or hide it from us he gave us everything we needed for life and godliness and we still have it but it's inside of us and we'll talk about that in another time anyway let's get back to the prosperity here uh, prosperity means that we're victorious in every area of our life. We're not lacking anything. It doesn't just mean that we have 10 cars. Why would I want 10 cars? If I, I have a ministry and I need 10 cars because I sent 10 people out to bless this or I give them away, then I need 10 cars or I need a jet. But whatever it is that I believe my ministry needed, if my ministry had a jet, you don't need to get upset and say that I am uh, have lavishness or, a bun, uh, or have a too much because you don't know what this ministry does or any other ministry so you're not God's servant so you don't know what's between that person and God so don't think that something someone has is lavishness or is too much uh, it's God who decides and God has abundance in all things and he wants to bless us okay let me go over some of this poverty is a curse and let me see if I can pull this one up on um, the overlays here, <clears throat> I want, uh, let's see, this one up there, and then I want to pull up this one. No, doesn't want to pull up that one. Okay, let's try it one more time. Nope, it is not working, so I will read it to you. Okay, sorry, I just was trying to make it easier for y'all. Um, <coughs> here is what the Bible says about being poor. Oh, uh, let me see. In Okay, Deuteronomy 28, 47, really, really important scripture. In hunger and in thirst, in nakedness and in want of all things, he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he destroys you. That is talking about the curse. The curse in Deuteronomy 28 that Jesus redeemed us from in Galatians 3.13. He took the curse on the cross and redeemed us from that curse. And part of that curse was to be in hunger, to be in thirst, to be in nakedness, to in want of all things. And it was a yoke. So you see, poverty and lack and being poor is under the curse. It's also oppression, it's a yoke, and it's bondage. It's not from God. And the blessing is abundance in overflowing more than you need in every area of your life. Here's another scripture. Uh, Psalms 34, 6. It says, And the poor man shall cry out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Okay? God does not want you to be poor. Psalms 112, 9. He dispenses abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. His thorn will be his thorn his horn will be exalted with honor. God does not want you to be poor. 
Psalms 113.7. He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap. Okay. So God does not want you to be poor. Okay. Psalms 132.15. I will abundantly bless her provisions. I will satisfy her poor with bread. Okay. God does not want you to have poor. Now listen to these scriptures. This is what Proverbs says about the poor. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. Proverbs 15.10. Proverbs 10. Uh, 10 <laughs> Proverbs 14.20. The poor man is hated. Even by his own neighbor. But the rich has many friends. Proverbs 19.4. Wealth makes many friends. But the poor is separated from his friends. Did you ever want to go anywhere? Bless anyone? Give a birthday present? Go visit somebody in the hospital and you were too poor. You didn't have gas in your car. I have. I've been there. I've done that. I had a poverty mindset. I had to break through that. And you just got to break through it because God does not want you poor. He wants you rich in every area of life. And that means that means a wealth, prosperity, money. It also means in every area of your life, whatever it is you need. He wants you to have the best so you can give the best. He wants you to have the best because that represents him. That All the good stuff I have, my husband bought me what I have or my ministry. And so if I'm poor, then I am representing my husband. And you're looking at my husband and you're saying, oh, he's poor. He can't even provide for his wife. Okay, so it's the same way with God. If we are poor... Have you ever seen these people that go around with a bumper sticker? They have this old rusted out car that goes blah, 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 and puts white smoke out in a bumper sticker that says, God is good. And you just want to choke them and say, take that bumper sticker off. My God is good, but you obviously haven't caught on to it yet. I mean, what a poor representation. It's like saying, my daddy is king and you're driving this rusty out old car. It's not because you're humble, it's because you're poor. So get that sticker off your car. Anyway, uh, the next one is Proverbs 19.7. It says, All the brothers of the poor hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He may pursue them with words, yet they abandon him. The Bible, if you look in Proverbs, has a lot to say in Proverbs of the poor. Here's another one. Proverbs 23.7. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. That's another reason God doesn't want you poor. You become a servant when you're poor. My house is in the process of being uh, completed. And I don't know how long it'll take, but we are doing it from money to money, paycheck to paycheck, money to money. As my husband has time, as we have money, we are building a debt-free house. And it is awesome. And you can see by this, it's not done yet. But you know what? It is debt-free. And that's how God wants us. I am. We are no servant to nobody because our house is debt free and you don't know what a stress that takes off of us <clears throat> now my house might not be a mansion my house is like a little one and a half uh, cab lofted cabin which I absolutely love it's my dream house I like small houses I like small spaces because it makes me feel close to my daddy big open spaces is just too much space that you have to fill and clean and air conditioning and heat I don't like that but anyway um, it's debt free and I'm not a servant to anybody and God wants that for you here's, an, here's another one Proverbs 28 15 like a roaring lion and a charging bear the wicked rule over the poor now we are the king's kids kings are defined by how much property they have now if we own an itty bitty island like that or a little bitty piece of land and the devil owns all the rest of the world we haven't done anything we haven't gained anything for our kingdom for God <laughs> as his representative we haven't taken anything from the devil so think of it this way being rich means that the people who are uh, Satanists and and all the people who are of the devil who are not saved yet or not even don't even cross it out don't even think of that think of it this way the more that we own, the less that the devil and his kids own. Okay? You don't want the devil having wealth and riches because then he can take rock stars and make them famous and they sell their soul to him 
and they get people going to hell and killing themselves and doing everything else. So think of it this way. The more that you have, the more that you can give, the better you can represent God, and the less that the devil has. Nothing on this earth should belong to the devil. He is here illegally, and everything he owns is illegal. It's ours. So think of it that way. <clears throat> Here's a really another good scripture. Ecclesiastic 9.16 says the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. Have you ever seen anybody poor on the street, shaggedy, looking terrible, trying to give um, advice to somebody? They don't take it because it's like, well, who do you think you are? You aren't nowhere, no one. Because being poor, you won't be heard. So that's another reason to be rich. Like a roaring lion and a charging bear, a wicked ruler rules over poor people. Okay, You are dictated to, you are pressed under somebody's thumb when, <coughs> when you do not have, and I'm talking too loud here, when you do not have prosperity or working or believing God's grace to receive that prosperity, you are, are uh, being oppressed. God does not want you to be poor. Now here are some ways uh, that God shows in the Word. Uh, tithing, I believe tithing is under the Old Covenant and I don't believe that we have to tithe, but you know what? I tithe because God showed me a secret. He said when I tithe, which means give 10% to God, to my church, or, or um, to the church that's feeding me spiritually, when I give them 10%, I am partnering with God. My business and my ministry is in partnership with God because I tithe. I don't tithe because it's a law or because I have to, because I'm not under the law. I tithe because I willingly want God to be my partner. I'm thankful for what He's done for me. Excuse me now, here are some benefits of a tither. Uh, Malachi 3.10, Leviticus 27.30, Deuteronomy 26.1 and 2, Hebrews 7.8, Genesis 14.19 and 20. Now, sowing and reaping, <coughs> excuse me, and, and multiplication. Here are some scriptures that you can look up. John 6.11. And this is about sowing, reaping, and multiplication. And I'll share with you something the Lord shared with me when I'm done uh, giving you these scriptures so you can write them down. Galatians 26, 1, 12 through 14. John 6, 11, in case I didn't say that. Mark 4, 26. Mark 4, 20. Mark 10, 28 and 30. And then uh, here's some scriptures on miraculous supernatural restoration. Restoration means... When God gives something back from you to you that was stolen from you, but He doesn't just give back what was stolen, He makes it even better than it was before. And that's Joel 2.25, Proverbs 6.31, Matthew 6.12, Matthew 18.27. Here are some scriptures that God gives to us about uh, giving to the poor. That's another way to be prosperous, is to give to the poor. Because that's the kind of mentality we should have. The more we give, the more we get. You can't outgive God, and giving is a lot of fun. <coughs> I know, because I've given away several cars, and I got blessed with several cars. I still believe in God, though, to pay off my beautiful black car, but I call it debt free. But someday I'm going to give away a house. Someday I'm going to give away. I never gave away $1,000, and someday I'm going to give away out of my own personal money $1,000 and $10,000, and I'm just going for it. But. Giving to the poor is another way that God wants to make you rich. And that's Matthew 19, 21. And a lot of scriptures in James. And memorial giving. Look that up. That's Mark 12, 41 through 44. Acts 10, 4. And then here's another way that we're rich. We're rich through our covenant, which, which is Galatians 3, 13 through 20, and 29. And Ephesians 1, 10 and 11. And now let's take a look at some more scriptures here. <coughs> If you look at um, Matthew 14, 25, and that is um, where this uh, owner or king or whatever, he comes and he gives uh, one talent, two talent, and five talents to 
these uh, his his people that works for him, and then he goes to another country and he comes back and he collects from each one uh, <coughs> what they've earned or made, and this is how basically how the story goes. To the one that had five talents, he God got ex not God but the 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 owner got excited and he says, "Well done, good and faithful servant." Faithful over a few things, I will make you ruler over many things. Enter in the joy of the Lord. Okay, so let's take that one at a time. Well done, good and faithful servant. Okay, so God is showing us there that the things that he gives us, and this was money. Okay, when they say talent, they're talking about gold and silver money. You can say it's related to everything else, and it is, but here he is talking specifically about money. Okay, gold, silver, coins. Okay, when that person took that gold and silver coin and worked the kingdom system, figured out how to make it multiply, the money multiply, God said, well done, good and faithful servant. So, we are to work the kingdom system, and in, like I said, my seminars later on this year, and some of the uh, things I'm going to be uh, you know, I'll have for sale some teaching and stuff that will just be awesome. And some future books. I will teach you how to work the kingdom system. It is so exciting. But they worked the system. And they were called well done, good, and faithful. So we're to work the kingdom system to bring finances in. And then he said, you are faithful over a few things. So, he, so money is called a few things. And it was it wasn't even his wealth; it was that man's wealth. Okay, I will make you ruler over many things. So it's very important that you do the right thing with your money, or you won't get rich. So right there, there's a um, safety valve. You know, you uh, need to multiply your money, and then you become ruler over many things but you need to do it right okay then it says I will make you ruler over many things cool so if you can work money get, work money through the kingdom system money is the world's the Satan system the kingdom of the world the cursed system money is the system that's toiling to get what you need God's system is rest and grace to get what you need and it's sowing and reaping it's really cool but he says enter into the joy of the Lord now Look at there, right there. It says that God gets joy out of you learning to work the system financially and creating wealth. Very important. Those are not peace signs. Those are quotations. <laughs> okay. Now, the guy who did two talents, same thing happened. But what happened with the guy with one talent? <laughs> ah. Okay, wait a minute. One of the things he did was he didn't take those five coins from him that he gave him to use and the five coins that he um, made. I don't see where he says, okay, give me those ten coins. He seemed to have left, allowed him to keep them. Then you go to the last server and he says, I was afraid. Fear. Fear. Okay. And I went and hid the talent. And he talks about saying, I know you're a man that you reap where you haven't sown and so on. So this is about reaping and sowing. The kingdom system works by reaping and sowing. The earth curse system works by toil. And so this guy was afraid and he went and he hid himself. Now listen to the reaction of the master. He says, thou wicked and slothful, thy wicked and lazy servant. Wow. So if you don't take the physical money <clears throat> and multiply it. You're a wicked and lazy servant. You're supposed to work the system. Not the world system, but the kingdom system to get the world's money. Okay? Thou should have put my money in the bank, in other words, and then when I came, I would receive what's mine with interest. So God wants to receive the money with interest because all the money on the earth belongs to us, to God, God's kids not to the devil. So he wants what's his to belong to his kids. Daddy's a good daddy. Okay. And he said, cast the unprofitable servant into the darkness 
and there'll be weeping and uh, gnashing of teeth. So I just find it amazing that the prosperity gospel is one of the biggest things that people get angry over. They just, let me, let me give you a hint. If there's any kind of preaching that makes you red faced, furious, sweat dripping, angry, you are being oppressed by a demon of religion and tradition to command it to go. Okay. Cause I found out the number one thing when people get mad about speaking in tongues, prosperity gospel, the grace gospel, they have a religious spirit that is influencing them or attached to them and anger is the first sign of it so if you get angry you got a religious spirit now it's really silly because if you think about it if God is God and all this wealth is on the earth and he created it for us that means he wants us to have it okay he didn't create it he didn't create precious gemstones and gold and silver so that it would be <coughs> nothing to us he created it for us to bless us because we are kings and royalty okay so get it out of your head that God wants you poor okay <laughs> he wants his kids to have everything just like you want your kids to have everything you see something on TV you go wow I can't wait to get that for my kid because they're gonna be so excited and then you turn it over to them and they're so excited daddy is the same way he loves to bless you with gifts and money and wealth and toys and and he loves to give you so much that you give it away because his nature is giving and your nature is giving so it's fun to bless people it's fun to give away so that's it for today oh I have some questions here that I want to answer I'm sorry let me get out of this and let me <laughs> get on to some of these questions that I can answer uh, that of uh, actually they are uh, questions that people have about um, let's see if I can get them up here questions that that people have about saying that God does not want us to prosper let's see if I can get that up there preset title right there is the one I'm set I'm, maybe it'll only do so many I don't know why Okay, I'll just have to pull them up this way. Let me get these questions for you that that people are, I um, guess you could say, people who don't believe in the prosperity gospel might get upset about that. They say, oh, look at this. Okay, so these are things that people say, well, God doesn't want you rich. Look at these scriptures. And that's James 5, 1 and 6. It says, come now, you rich. Weep and howl for your misery that is coming upon you your riches are rotten and your garments are moth eaten your gold and silver are corroded and corruption will be the evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire you have laid up treasures in the last state now this is the part listen to this behold the wages of the laborer who mowed your fields which you have kept back by fraud are crying out against you and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fattened your heart in the day of the slaughter. Okay. So, why is there a problem with this? This person is corrupt. This person, you reap what you sow. This person did not pay his wages that he was supposed to pay to his laborers he kept them back by fraud okay and he instead of paying the people what he promised them he kept it back by fraud and he indulged in himself I agree that kind of person won't have wealth because they'll reap what they sow okay so that is no argument against saying that God does not want you rich the next one is Luke 16 19 through 31 <clears throat> And that says, there was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, who feasted scrumptiously, or whatever that word is, every day at the gate. And there was a poor man laid there, Lazarus, and he had sores, and who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. 
Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sore. The poor man died and was carried to Abraham's side, and the rich man died and was in, and it was tormented in uh, far off, and uh, so on. Okay, so people say, look, rich people go to hell. No, you reap what you sow. Look at here again. This poor man desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Why? 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 Why was this rich man so so self-absorbed, so selfish, and so evil that he didn't go out, pick up this beggar, bring him in the house, clothe him, and and feed him, and bless him because he was selfish and self-centered. Okay, so we can drop that one. That's not saying rich people go to hell. That's saying that this man was again self-indulgent. He did not it was not God, was not the center of his life. Everything comes through Jesus. Okay, let's go to the next one. The third one, Matthew 6, 19 and 21. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth. Why? Okay. Where moths and rust destroy it. And thieves break in and steal it. But, but, lay up for yourself treasures on earth. I mean, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Why? Where moth and rust does not destroy it, thieves don't break in. For where your treasure is, there your heart is. And that's an awesome scripture. Now, you can't say that God doesn't want you rich with this scripture. Actually, I would use this scripture to show you that God wants you rich, not poor. Because if you go to the scripture that says that Jesus, that the disciples say, uh, Jesus, we gave up this and we gave up that. What shall we have? And Jesus said, well, I'll tell you what. Not only when you get to heaven, but here on earth, you're going to have um, sevenfold return of what you gave up, or hundredfold return of what you gave up, houses and lands and so on. Not only here on this earth, but in heaven too. So, and it all, where your treasure is, it says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. That's not spiritual things, that's physical things will be added to you. So, basically what it's showing you here is the kingdom of God is God's government and authority in you. And the kingdom of God comes with everything you need for life and godliness to prosper you in every area of your life. And, <coughs> excuse me, uh, prosper you in every area of your life. So, you should be sowing and reaping and like I said I'll be teaching this in later seminars and things I'll have for sale things I'll be sowing into your life uh, you should be sowing and reaping to get a harvest of prosperity and, uh, and abundance you sow to reap you don't go out and plant corn so that you can say oh I was a good girl I planted some corn today no you go out and plant corn because you want corn the same thing with working the kingdom system you go out and you give away what God tells you to give to who he tells you to give because you want a harvest. Don't just give it to anybody. Give it to somebody that will believe in faith for your harvest. Don't. If you give to the poor, you'll just have returned back to you what you give. But if you want to invest, you sow it into somebody's ministry or into somebody that knows how to agree with you what you're believing for. So this is sowing into the kingdom. You'll have it on earth and in heaven. Now let's go over the next ones that they use as um, saying that God wants you poor. And that's 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. It says, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do, you, do not be deceived. Neither will sexually immoral, idolaters, adult, uh, I, I, people who do idolatry, people who do adultery, nor men who practice homosexuals, homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revivals, nor swindlers, swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Well, if somebody is saved, they're in Christ Jesus. They're not these things anymore. And when you're in Christ Jesus, you're not going to be greedy. And you're just, Jesus is the focus. So that's another scripture you can't use. Matthew 19, 21, Jesus said, if you would be perfect. And I agree, greedy people are yucky people. You don't want to be greedy. So that has nothing to do with showing that, that you shouldn't be wealthy. And you got to also look at, Whose description of greedy are you looking at? 
Okay, so Matthew 19, 21. Jesus said to them, if you would be perfect. Hey, if guys, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and post them now. If you would be perfect, go and sell what you possess. Give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven. And follow me. Giving to the poor, if you read the scriptures, says that God will give back to you. So you're not losing out any wealth by giving to the poor. Because God says he'll, he'll, he'll give it back to you. Because he wants you to give to the poor. Um, and treasures in heaven is you're sowing. On earth you're giving to people. And you are sowing in heaven things that you need. And then you call them down when you need them. In other words, uh, it's like a bank account. I sow finances to this ministry that God told me to. And I expect to harvest. Let's say I gave $100 to this ministry. And I am in agreement. And I... I followed God's instruction. It was I took my money out of the, I, I blessed it by taking it out of the world curse system, and giving it to the kingdom system. I by blessing it, I called it God's. I gave it and sowed it into this ministry, and I'm believing God for a harvest for that hundred dollars, maybe ten thousand dollars back, thousand dollars, whatever. And I'm calling in that harvest. I'm thanking God for that harvest and receiving that harvest, and. That harvest is going to come out of heaven. Men are going to sow it to me. I'm going to find gold. I'm going to uh, be blessed in my ministry. I'm going to have favor and so on. So that is treasures in heaven. <clears throat> See, our treasures in heaven are not earned. We don't earn treasures in heaven by giving to the poor. Um, we don't, um, and this is really cool because this is a revelation just coming to me right now. When we sow and we reap, and when we give to the poor, we are laying up treasures in heaven. And we're heaven is our bank. We're storing it there. And then when we need it, we write the check here on earth. And the angels deliver the money to us. Is, is the best way I can describe it. Now, <coughs> we're not giving to the poor so that when we get to heaven, we, have, we die. And we go to heaven, we have this awesome treasure. No. Everything in heaven is free. It's a gift from our Father God. It's not something we had to earn. So when we get to heaven, our mansion and, and the theme park God creates for us because we love theme parks or the whatever He creates for us because that's what we love to do. It's not earned. The only thing that we're going to earn is, is crowns. And now we're not even talking about that. So, so that mm -hmm. kind of kills that one. Then the next one is Romans 12, uh, 6 and 8 and which this really doesn't say anything. It's talking about the gifts um, given, use them according to our faith. So if somebody has the gift of contribu contributing, uh, do it generously. And that, I agree with that. You should be generous in every, in all you're giving. You should not be stingy. God loves a cheerful giver. Giver, you should be generous in everything. And so that is not a scripture that can say, hey, look, God doesn't want you rich. Excuse me. Okay, so let me get out of this. <clears throat> let me see if um, there are any mm. questions up here. Um, let me go to the right place here and see. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, so uh, I don't see any questions here. You might want to post them on my website or on YouTube if you're watching live on YouTube or if you're watching on Google Hangouts. So that's all that I am doing today on uh, God Wants You Rich and I want you to know that God wants you rich. <laughs> he wants you rich in every area of your life and prosperous. And I pray that you just get that mindset and that this really blesses you. And uh, check out my website robinbremer.net and I will talk to you next time. You have a blessed day.